welcome everybody. Woo! Yeah, it's a great night. That's what we want to hear. We're live in the WEIU TV studio. I'm Kian Armstrong and I'm joined with my colleague Jaina Johnson and we are so thrilled that you're tuning in tonight and we are so thrilled that we have 38 stories about Marshall tonight. That's right and we have a lot of our storytellers right here live in the studio with you. We're going to be here all evening. 38 wonderful stories to shout out about Marshall tonight. It's been so much fun getting to know all these people from Par from Marshall, I'm sorry. from I've been so good about not saying that. So we're all about Marshall tonight. It's been so much fun getting to know them. Tonight, you're gonna learn a lot about them and the town that they love and that they live in. Be sure to give your friends and your family a shout out. If they're out of the viewing area, tell them to log online at weiu.net. We're streaming all over the world tonight because we're sharing Marshall with the world. So stay tuned. This is Marshall, this is our story. Marshall, This Is Our Story is made possible in part by Gerald R. Forsyth, proud to support this program, a patron of education, community programs, and improvements in the Marshall, Illinois area. Gerald R. Forsyth hopes you enjoy Marshall. This is our story on WEIU. The City of Marshall. In an effort to maintain and enhance the local economy, the City of Marshall is taking an active role in community growth in Marshall, Illinois, with a progressive attitude while maintaining a rich history and tradition. The Marshall Chamber of Commerce supports business, tourism, and economic development in the Marshall area. Located in downtown Marshall, the Marshall Chamber of Commerce is excited in their support of Marshall. This is our story. ZFTRW Automotive. ZFTRW is a primary developer and producer of active and passive safety systems and serves all major vehicle manufacturers worldwide. The Quality Lime Company supports the efforts of all the storytellers and supporters of Marshall. This is our story on WEIU. Enjoy the program from everyone at the Quality Lime Company of Marshall. Interstar Electric Cooperative, your locally owned electric cooperative, pledges to serve its members with integrity, accountability, innovation, and a commitment to community. Interstar is proud to bring you Marshall. This is our story. First Bank of Marshall, providing financial services to households, agriculture, and small businesses in the Marshall, Illinois area. First Bank is pleased to be part of Marshall. This is our story. Yargis Manufacturing produces industrial blending and material handling equipment. Yargis shows its dedication to the growth and development of Marshall and the surrounding areas by providing both financial and community involvement and supporting Marshall. This is our story. Rhett Smitley, in honor of her husband, Joe. Rhett's motto for Marshall is, you may come as a stranger, but you'll leave as a friend. Marshall is located in East Central Illinois. Um, it's a small community, it's got a small town charm. Jump on I-70 and you're an hour to Indianapolis if you want that big town feel, you like to go shopping in the big town. Two hours to St. Louis, so it's just a nice location, but you can get, there's just a lot of great quality here and a lot of great people live here. And that's why I really love this town. I've had, and many people have the opportunity of, of advancing in their skills and going to another town, going to a bigger community to work, but in the end, I think it's a small town. This is where I want to be and this is where I'm going to live. So I'm, I'm excited about this town. And the one thing that I notice a lot, and I think some people just take it for granted, is how clean our community is. Marshall really takes pride in our downtown. Um, we offer a grant program for businesses here where we'll paint their buildings for, or give them money to help uh, fund their, their painting for their buildings. And I think that truly has helped out our downtown businesses. Here, the city owns all of the bills. You get one bill. So your water, your sewer, your gas, your electric is, is all there. When there's a power outage, 
we also have a generator. So most likely your power is going to be out 30 minutes to an hour if there's a storm that goes through, unless there's a, a break between your house and the main line. But other than that, we have a generator that powers us up, and I think that really makes us a difference in a lot of towns because, you know, even people that live in the country that's here close to Marshall, they may be out of power for, you know, a day or so when Marshall's fired up their generators and we're, we've got power. I think one of the most important things um, about a community is the education for our kids. Marshall itself has won seven times the Bright Star of Excellence Award for our school system. So it goes to show you that we have great people that are leading our school systems. We have great educators. So Marshall has the Eastern Region Center of Lakeland College. That helps keep kids here, but it also allows them, if they're wanting to go out and just get some education for a specific job, the colleges really support our communities for our manufacturers. We have a lot of active groups. So Marshall Main Street, Marshall Chamber, they're always doing things for the kids and stuff. And I think it's just so important. Uh, the lemonade stand contest that we have every year, the uh, annual uh, Marshall Autumn Fest, Festival that is every year it's just something that's wonderful you have people that come back for their class reunions to see each other and I just think it's a really a fun time and uh, there's just a lot of events we have now a new event that we just started last year which is Marshall um, night out on the National Road and that is where everyone can come out to downtown Marshall it's a free event it costs absolutely nothing you can drive right outside of town and there's a lot of things to do so you can go out to Lincoln Trail State Park you've got boating camping fishing you jump on over another, you know, to Mill Creek on the other side of town. You also, once again, have boating, fishing, and camping, but you also have hiking. You have, um, there's also some, a new bike trail that, th that was put out there. There's just a lot to do in these recreational areas, and not only at those parks, but the, the city itself has its own little parks. Marshalls are just a great place, I think, to live, work, raise a family. And, you know, if you've, if you've not been here to Marshall, I encourage you to, to come here. Well, no story about Marshall uh, wouldn't be complete without talking about its founder, Colonel William B. Archer. Colonel Archer was a very colorful uh, individual. His father came over in his teens from County uh, Down, Ireland, and uh, his father served in the Revolutionary War in, for a little over three years. His father, Zachariah, moved to Kentucky where he met his wife. There, the, they had uh, a total of nine children. In uh, 1817, uh, Colonel Archer uh, came with uh, two of his brothers and a friend, and they came up the Ohio on a flatboat and then up the Wabash. They found uh, an area around York, Illinois, down along the Wabash River. They homesteaded three parcels of land, 160 acres each. He was very industrious at the age of 23, did that. He was uh, appointed as the first uh, county clerk to uh, Clark County. In 1824, at the young age of 31, he was elected as Illinois representative and served there for eight years. Uh, the very next year, the Black Hawk War was breaking out and he organized the first regiment from Clark County of volunteers to serve. So uh, he was always known as Colonel Archer from that point on. Colonel Archer uh, got to know a gentleman by the name of Joseph Duncan. Joseph Duncan became governor, um, but they, he wasn't governor at the time of the Black Hawk War, but uh, they got to know each other quite well. And uh, that's where they designed the plan to invest together in an area that might be a good place for a town. And so uh, Governor Joseph Duncan and Colonel William B. Archer uh, platted out and bought the acreage and uh, started the town of Marshall. In 1835, they offered for sale the first uh, lots in the town. Uh, Colonel Archer uh, was also a surveyor by trade. In the legislature, he also met a gentleman by the name of Abraham Lincoln and got to be quite good friends with him. Governor Duncan appointed Colonel Archer to be the surveyor for the I&M Canal that connected Lake Michigan to the Illinois River. And this was in 1835. And that's why 
Archer Avenue in Chicago is named after the founder of Marshall. Later on, as Lincoln got into uh, more of the national politics, he was nominated in the Philadelphia Republican Convention in 1856 as vice president. Well, Archer, being the representative from this area to that convention, was on the main platform with Lincoln. So when Lincoln's name uh, came up for the nomination, it's uh, written that Archer jumped up with a big hooping holler and the whole place just broke out in laughter and applause. And so uh, Colonel Archer kind of made a spectacle at the 1856 First Republican Convention. So Colonel Archer uh, died at the age of 77, uh, pretty well wore out from giving his all to uh, the community and the town of Marshall. One quote though that came from the 1885 Clark County history uh, is that it was quoted, in fact, were the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this is a man. American Legion Auxiliary Choir, which is quite a mouthful, is a, a Cinderella story because here we have 12 young women in 1950 from a little backwater town, Marshall. We have these women going for, to New York, to Chicago, to Miami, to Denver, to win first place in national contests. We had built a new American Legion post and that post was um, uh, very well supported because this was 1950. Guys had just come home from the war and of course the women had to have part of it. So I had to have something to do with it. Always have to have women to support these men. So um, the women decided that they wanted to do something on their own and this is what they did. They formed this choir. Their director was Mrs. Helen Moore. Everybody had a Mrs. in front of their names, so when I talk about them, sometimes I, that's how I think of them. Uh, Helen Moore was the uh, former music teacher and the wife of the local funeral director, Basil Moore. At this time, they had um, a national, well, a state convention of American Legion, and then they had a state convention for the auxiliary. And at each convention, um, they had, uh, the women had a contest, a music contest. And uh, choirs from all around the country would come and sing for the national. So they won. Over the next 10 years, they won nine state contests and four national contests. Well, this is a big thing for Marshall and put us on the map. Over the years, there were about 40 women that were involved in this choir, not all at the same time. It was usually, it was between 12 and, and 15. But it, it just was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful experience for me as a newcomer to town. And it's something that the town is very proud of. She directed the chorus and the accompanist was a woman called Gertrude Stepp, who could play anything by ear, and it was wonderful. Over the years, and they, they uh, sang for about 10 years, over the years they involved about 70, off and on, senior citizens. They would do little skits and act out songs like Take Me Out to the Ball Game, things like that, and uh, it was just fun working with them. But the accompanists could no longer play, and the, you know, those things happen and your groups die off. But I think that 10 years was a pretty good run for the Forever Young. We didn't want a formal choral group, and we didn't want to um, travel around too much, because all of us were pretty busy. So we decided that we would have programs and let them come to us. At that time, Harlan Hall, where we're sitting now, uh, was just being renovated. So one of our first projects was giving programs to help pay for Harlan Hall. 
Our theme song for Women of Note was the same theme song that um, the auxiliary choir had used. It was side by side. We sang for about 10 years, raising money and having a good time together, but all good things do have to come to an end, and we finally decided that uh, since everybody had probably summed themselves out, that it was time for us to just uh, disband. We were happy to be able to add to the heritage of music in Marshall, and I hope that some, in years to come, there will be others who will follow in our footsteps. ZFTRW, we're celebrating our 63rd year in business in Marshall this year. Uh, we started in 1953 as Formalite. Uh, we had 25 employees, 15,000 square feet. In 1959, TRW bought Formalite. And from 60 to 88, the company grew. And uh, we got into the, we started out making radio coils, coils for radios and TVs. And then throughout the 80s, we got into the automotive uh, motor controller business. And um, we got our big break in 1989 when we built our first, built and shipped our first airbag module. Uh, the airbag business got us into the business of safety electronics, which is what we do today. Uh, the facility has went through several expansions over the years. In 1980, it was approximately 33,000 square feet, grew to 66,000 square feet. In 1996, the building expanded to 133,000 square feet, and we had about six to 800 employees at that time. Today, we're part of the ZF Corporation, and we're just, we're recently going through a building expansion, so we're expanding to about 180,000 manufacturing square feet. In 2015, TRW was purchased by a German company, ZF, and the two combined to make one of the largest automotive suppliers in the world. We have a lot of competitive advantage with that. We both owned a lot of uh, content and vehicles in the world, and we're stronger today because of that acquisition and that merger. Today we have over a thousand employees and contractors working in our facility, and that's unique. When you drive into Marshall to have a city limits of 4,000 people and a facility of 1,000 people. We're real proud of that. Today we make airbag controllers, uh, crash sensors for the airbags, inertial measurement units, analog brake modules. We're in the driver camera assist business. That's our newest business in Marshall and that's what's leading to a lot of the growth at our plant. We make over 1,000 shipments a day to 60 unique locations all over the world. Uh, we take pride in the fact that our, we see our units and vehicles in the community. Um, I like to show off to my kids, explain to my kids that I make the brake module that goes in that truck. One of the strengths of our company is our employees. Uh, TRW wouldn't have invested the, the capital in the building in Marshall if, it, if they didn't have a strong employee base. Our employees has tra have transformed from being a low-tech factory built in the 50s to a highly automated manufacturing facility that's competitive across the world today. We have multiple generations that want to work here. We've got some pictures of three generations of employees working here. People move to Marshall because of TRW and then their families stay here. We've got one picture of a family that moved from California, uh, Judy Antonez, and today her daughter and her granddaughter work at our facility. We take great pride in their, our involvement in the community. We're very involved with the United Way, Relay for Life. Uh, we, we're involved in local backpack programs where kids take home food from schools. Uh, we're involved in the Marshall Family Reading Night where we donate prizes and books to the kids. Uh, we've got a tradition at the plant where we adopt a family at Christmas. We've been doing that for over 25 years. The city of Marshall has supported TRW over the years by providing a nice community to live in. We've got a great school system in Marshall. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for people to stay in Marshall and that's important to us. The story I came to tell today was about Johnny G. Snedeker. His nickname was, depending on who you talk to, the suppliers in Terre Haute called him Quentin Time John because he always showed up right at quitting time. A lot of people that worked for him called him Johnny Go, because his initials were that. His family and everyone that loved him called him JG, 
And that's whose story I'm here to tell today. The name of my talk was There Were Always Motorcycles. And the reason I named that is because from the time I can remember, there were always motorcycles. My dad rode a 61 Harley Davidson to 61 cubic inch Harley Davidson to La Porte, Indiana with my mother on the back pregnant with me and mom told the story of holding a lamp on her knee all the way to La Porte. <laughs> when World War II started, dad went in the Navy. He was a carpenter's mate. He had learned the carpenter trade because he had to drop out of school when he was 15. My grandfather lost the family farm, the homestead farm, for a $300 debt in 1929 because he had his chest crushed in an accident. The horses got him up against the barn and uh, he couldn't work. And 1929 was not a good year to not be able to work. So dad had to contribute to the family. So he dropped out and went to work for Wilbur Moore. Now Wilbur Moore was a craftsman, a house builder par excellence. And in that era, house builder built the entire house. They built the windows, they plumbed the house, they wired the house, they put up the stonework. They did everything. Dad borrowed $5,000 to build the first house, sold my mom's Buick, bought a pickup truck, and a motorcycle. <laughs> and <clears throat> he had a motorcycle. We didn't have a car until I was uh, 14 or 15, but we always had a motorcycle and a pickup truck. Dad loved motorcycles. He loved he, riding them, racing them, uh, working on them. He was a motorcycle aficionado and he was a craftsman. We moved, Dad built another house, a bigger one, sold the one we were living in, and we moved to the next house. I grew up with two befores and Rock Lath, <laughs> our constant companion. One night I remember distinctly as Dad, after we finished dinner, he said, pick up the chair you're sitting on, we're moving. <laughs> we moved to the next house. So we did that down the block until my uh, summer between the seventh and eighth grade. Then we moved to the country. So during this time, we lived on the farm. Dad was building houses. And he built first the American Legion. Then he built the Lutheran Church. In later years, he built the nursing home. Um, he built the bank building. There's an office building over there, the fire station. Dad used to have some sayings that he would say. If it was a pretty day, he would say, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If we were away from home, out of state, we came back and he'd roll across the state line. He'd say, good old Illinois. <laughs> and he was serious about it. He had lived in California and, and the Navy sent him to Boston and Connecticut. They sailed around the South Pacific. But when it came time to start his life, he came home. We're still so excited that you're joining us this evening. We heard some wonderful stories there at the beginning. I had the privilege of interviewing Ted, and what a great story about his dad. And I had told him at the premiere, what a great dad. I wish I could have met him. It's a great story. He had a lot of great stories to share, and we're going to talk with him in just a moment because he has another one he wants to share with you. But if you want a copy of the program tonight, what we really want you to do right now is get our phones started ringing. The number's at the bottom of your screen. For a copy of the program, you can get um, one copy for $75. If you want more than one, it's $60 each, so you can get two at $120, or if you want more than that, you're welcome to that as well. 
We need a phone call right now. So if you're out there and you've been watching and you've loved this program so far, we need you to call. We have eight people on the phones. Who's going to be the first one? Actually, we had somebody call before oh, we started good. tonight. Yes, we did. It's a friend of Rhett's. Her name is Florence Rhodes, and she's from Marshall, and she wanted to get her DVD right away, so she's already supported it. That's so who's going to be number Rhett, two? give her a wave give right there. We got Rhett. Rhett right back there with us. So who's these be phones first? are silent right now. Mm -hmm. You give us so much excitement when you get those phones ringing, and you get to talk to one of the storytellers mm -hmm. right here live in the studio. It's so much fun. A donation to the station of $75 will give you a Marshall, this is our story DVD. Maybe you want one for yourself and one for a loved one. That's one twenty. That means they're sixty dollars each. So right now, let's get another person on the phone. Lola and Rhett's on there. Let's give Ken and Karen a call right now. Keep on calling. That's right. We've got Jennifer sitting over here next to Kelly, and we're going to give it over to Kelly right now. Oh, isn't that sweet? I'm sitting next to my pal Jennifer Bishop. She is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce over there. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks tonight for, for Marshall. Us. This is our story. She's coming up. She's going to be talking about the Wall Dogs, a, a major event that's coming to Marshall in June. Give us the date. June 22nd through the 26th. Excellent. I'm going to stop talking to you so you can answer the phone. Again, my name is Kelly Runyon and I am the news director at WEIU and I am so proud to be a part of this program this evening. I've been a resident of Marshall since 1992 and I tell you, it, it just warms my heart when I see all these folks come into the studio tonight. So many people that I've grown up with, I've shared stories with, and now they're sharing stories with us. So please, if you can, call us this evening and show your support for Marshall, This Is Our Story. Over to Kian. Well, I'm standing here over on the other side of the phone bank, and I mentioned earlier that Mr. Snedeker is here with us, and he's sitting right here at the phone. And if the phone happens to ring his way, we'll let him take it. But, um, Mr. Snedeker, you had so many stories to share, and one of them you think um, is something very special and unique that Marshall had at one point in time. I want you to tell us about that. The thing that made Marshall prosperous in its early days and let it succeed where other small towns did not was the geographical location at the corner of Route 1 and Route 40. Route 1 ran from Chicago to Florida, Route 40 ran coast to coast, and we lived off of those two highways. So that made Marshall quite a spot to be in at that point in time. So it, it offered to some economic growth, that's correct, right? That's exactly right. There were uh, at least uh, 20 gas stations in town, there were uh, a dozen restaurants. Uh, that was the economic uh, impetus that let us succeed for 50 years was that geographical location. Well, thank you so much for sharing that tonight. And I believe uh, Ramin is getting a shot of the picture that we have back here on our set wall because that was Route 40 running right through downtown Marshall at that point in time. And what a piece of history. All of these pictures on our set right here are from the library that will be showcased there uh, throughout the month of June because we're going to hear about an anniversary that they're having. And to hear more stories just like this, be sure to call right now and get a copy of this program for $75. If you want more than that, they're $60 each. Jaina, over to you. Thanks, Kian, and thanks, Ted. Uh, if you were watching the program earlier and you saw the ZFTRW story that Jay shared with us, wow, how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So what a great story. Right now we have, a, we have five people that are not on the phone right now. If you could give us a call, the number's on the bottom of your screen. We would love for you to call. We've had so much fun working with Marshall people. We have 38 storytellers. All of them are from the Marshall area and they're telling stories about about their family, about their history, and lots and lots of great stories. We'd like for you to call if you're enjoying the program. You can also go online at weiu.net. You can donate there and you can watch online. Kian, come back over here. Another story we heard in that first break was about Colonel Archer, and we have Brian Murphy sitting right over here ready to take your call as well. And Colonel Archer was the founder of Marshall, and lots of great history there. And you're going to hear about some of these different names. You'll hear Archer mentioned several times throughout tonight's show because there's lots of different ways that these stories are connected with different people and different events that took place during history. Thank you, Ken. We would tonight, at this break, would like to have 10 people call. So right now, I think we've had maybe three or four. Who's going to be the next one? For a gift of $75, we would love to send you this two-hour historical um, 
History of Document. Marshall. <laughs> it's a documentary of Marshall. There's some folks over there that are part. Give us a wave Give over there wave in the everybody. living room. We're live in the living room scene right over there. Uh, some of our storytellers, friends, and family of. Okay. Uh, of us and our staff members here. And we want you to show them how important Marshall is to you mm -hmm. by saying thank you. Because when you when you call in and get a copy of the DVD tonight, you're saying thank you to them for documenting Marshall's history. Mm -hmm. The phones are continuing the ring. Ken Smith's on the phone. Lola's on the phone. Rhett's on the phone. Who's gonna be the next one to call? Brian is waiting. I think Brian's going over to talk to somebody. They're switcheroing. <laughs> and we said that's absolutely fine. If you wanna, there they go. They're talking. That's okay. To, they're talking to each other. That's wonderful. Keep on calling. If you love Marshall, if you love history, this is the time to call. We would love to talk to you tonight. When you call in, tell us who you are. We'll give you a shout out over the air. And some of you may say, I was the class of 60 or something. Another call just came Yay. in. We're having fun here in the studio, but it would be more fun if the phones continue to ring. That's right. When the phone bank is full and all lights are lit up, we know that this is something very Four special days. to the people who are watching tonight. So it doesn't matter where you're watching from. You could be watching on weiu.net. We're streaming live all around the world. So if you just now found that out be sure to call all your friends and family that possibly grew sure. up in Marshall and moved away because they need to tune in tonight that's right Ken there are so many great stories to come and we've just had four or five already but that's just a small taste of how great this program is so right now the numbers on your screen give us a call we'll get back to the program in just a minute but right now we are celebrating Marshall Illinois after we get done with the break right here, we get to talk to the storytellers and we get to hear about what you told them on the phone. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting and it really revs them up too because it makes them feel really good about what they did in telling these stories. Not not everybody has the courage to do what they're doing and we had 38 wonderful mm -hmm. people tell stories for this program marshall this is our story and you must get a copy of it tonight by giving us a call and talking to one of oh, them yay. we have some shout outs here to make we have sarah from marshall mm -hmm. and we have buffy from marshall thank you so much for calling <laughs> in you. tonight we really appreciate who's that who's going to be next we would love to give you a shout out one dvd is 75 dollars two or more are 60 apiece who's going to be the next one to call we are having fun and look at the phones we only have one person who wants to call ted he would be the next one if you call right now you'll get to talk to the one and only ted snedeker we'd love to have you call that's right and if you know some of um, the places that his dad built if you live in one of those mm -hmm. homes call him up and say thanks for telling me about your dad you may not have known all that history you may not have never mm -hmm. known that he always wanted to be on a motorcycle what a cool story it was a great story and you know you think about how many people homes he has built He's also built some other buildings in the community that we know that you've been in. What a great history. Also, the history of ZFTRW, we want to give you a shout out as well. Thank you so much for supporting this program tonight. Wonderful story, great place to have in your uh, hometown. Some uh, wonderful opportunities come from that facility. We were glad to hear about that tonight. And if you want to be able to have this program at your convenience so you can watch it at any time, share it with your friends, your family. It's something you really can keep and treasure. Be sure to call right now and get your copy. Coming up on the next segment is the Wall Dogs. And Jennifer Bishop's going to be talking about that. She's one of our phone operators tonight. And what a great project that's coming to Marshall. We're excited about it too. We also have a story about Mr. Gerald Forsyth, mm -hmm. um, Autumn Fest. Rhett Smitley is the storyteller of that. Oh, we have St. Mary's Church and Damian Macy is in the house tonight. Mm -hmm. Mill Creek, Harlan Hall, which Ken Smith is the storyteller of, and Velsico, which is a really good story mm -hmm. itself. Speaking of Harlan Hall, that's where we did all of our interviews for our storytellers and we cannot let this night get away without giving a shout out to Ruby. Ruby was amazing to us at Harlan Hall and her staff as well. So Ruby, if you're watching, thank you so much and we love you. Absolutely. She's great. And one other shout out we want to give is to the City Utilities because they fixed the air conditioning while we were over there for the premiere. <laughs> yes, they we did. so much appreciate all the hard work you put in that night. But right now what we're wanting you to do is keep these phones ringing. $120 for two DVDs. They're $60 each if you get two or more. But if you just want one copy, that's also just as well, $75. Somebody, yes, that's more that's people awesome. calling. We got some more calls. Somebody had asked me earlier, why do we enjoy doing this as a television station? And what I said is, 
wow, this isn't just a job. This is an opportunity for us as a PBS station, your local station, to tell the history of your community told by the people that live there. We did not dictate the stories tonight. You chose them. So that's what yeah. makes it great. They're coming from the Marshall people. Yeah, I got that question asked to me as well. How do you choose the stories? We don't. The mm -hmm. folks from Marshall chose mm -hmm. the stories. That's why this is something very personal to them, and it really means something very special when you call in and tell them thank you. So be sure to get your copy right now. Um, the phones are ringing, but we still have, I think, what, two open right now? So if it's happened to be busy, mm -hmm. just hang up and call back again because it's going to uh, be open and ready mm -hmm. to take your call. Well, and also, when we go back to the show, if you want to continue to call, that's okay, too. We'd love to hear from you. Jot that number down. But right now, my gosh, another call. Wow, we got people sharing phones. It's so much fun in the right now. If you're one of those people that have been waiting to call, we want you to call right now. Absolutely. We're all over social media tonight. WEIU TV, public broadcasting station. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. And we have one of our uh, former colleagues with us tonight, Kate Pleasant. She was on Heartland Highways. She's mm -hmm. doing all the social media for mm -hmm. us this evening. We very much appreciate yeah, that. So sure if do. you're on there, be sure to share that all over the place as well. And also, if you're out there and you're watching this program and you're enjoying it, call your friends. Let them know that there's a great program on WEIU tonight. If they're from out of state, out of town, get them on WEIU. Net, click on watch now they can enjoy the program from their home computer even though we're going to be here all evening with you we want to keep these phones ringing so whether we're on a program or whether we're in the break we're still live in the studio mm -hmm. and Have we're fun. willing and ready to take <laughs> your calls so we're going to get back to the program here shortly but you have about one more minute to talk to one of our storytellers right now and get a copy of this wonderful program we are having a lot more stories coming up another one of the next ones is uh, Ken Smith's going to talk about Harlan Hall. What a great story. I mean, Ken was the mayor during the time of the Harlan Hall. Uh, oh, here we go. Got some extra ones. How about Teresa McGlone? Thank you so much. She's from Marsha. Marshall. <laughs> Beth Gokler. She's from Marshall as well. Geckler? I'm Hello, sorry. Th Geckler. Thank you, girl. So, no, that's the good thing that's about having people you. in the house from Marshall. Beth tonight, Geckler from Marshall. don't Marshalls. want to butcher names. Thank you, Beth. How about Nancy Howell? Yes. Hal, thank you so much. We have had, right now, we are up to six people and the phones are still busy, so keep on calling, Marshall. We, uh, we're going to get back to the program, so be sure to stay tuned. Give us a call. We're not going anywhere. If you would rather get online, uh, it's weiu.net, but give us a call. The number's at the bottom of your screen. We're going to get back to the program right now. Bye.